everybody. I'm Debbie Sterling, and I'm the CEO and founder of Goldie Blocks. How many of you have heard about Goldie Blocks? Oh, we've got some fans. Awesome. So for those of you who haven't heard of Goldie Blocks, it's a toy company out to inspire the next generation of female engineers. So why engineers? Well, only 11% of engineers in the US are women, which is a huge problem, obviously. Meanwhile, engineers are building and advancing all the technologies, everything that is promoting society. They're incredibly important and they're mostly male, yet half of our population is female. We need more women engineers and we need to get them going at a young age. Girls start to lose interest in math and science around age eight and it's actually around age four when they start to associate gender with interests and careers. So in a world of Bob the Builder and Handy Manny and Bill Nye the Science Guy and Jimmy Neutron and I could go on and on. It's no wonder that girls don't see themselves as engineers. Oh, there we go. But I didn't come here today to really talk a ton about Goldie Blocks. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was actually my path to getting the Goldie Blocks. I launched about a year ago and I've gone from a prototype in my living room in San Francisco, San Francisco to national distribution in Toys R Us and one of the best-selling toys on Amazon. And it's been a crazy journey. And the thing that has made it all possible is how passionate I am about the mission behind the company. And so I know it sounds so cliche, but in social entrepreneurship, it really is about finding that passion and being so obsessed with it because you will do audacious things when you really believe in something and it's addictive and people want to help you. But the problem is, how do you find that passion? And I didn't have it right away. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I found it. And I think it all started my freshman year at Stanford. I was one of those few women in my first mechanical engineering 101 class. And if you're wondering if I was one of those kids that was programming calculators at the age of four, I was not. I was playing dress up and ponies. I never even heard the word engineering until I was a senior in high school. My math teacher was writing my recommendation letter and she asked what I was gonna major in. I said I had no idea. She said, how about engineering? And I thought, why does this woman think I would wanna drive trains? <laughs> and I was too ashamed to admit I didn't know what it was. But when I went off to Stanford, Luckily, that woman had put this thought in my head and I couldn't forget it, so I signed into this class and to my surprise, we were not repairing train engines, but we were actually learning how stuff works and how to invent things. And it wasn't all complex algorithms and math and science and numbers only, although there was plenty of that, but it was incredibly creative. We were learning how to be inventors and how everything in the world is made. And it's such an empowering skill. Fell in love with engineering, declared it as my major. But it wasn't easy being one of the few women in those classes. It was often in groups with all guys. They would always ignore my ideas. And I never felt like it fit in. It always bugged me. And actually, after I had graduated, it was in 2005, and it was the year of the infamous Steve Jobs commencement speech. And in that speech, he said, Never settle until you find your passion. So here we go, okay. I've gotta find my passion now. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I didn't actually go into engineering after I graduated. I got offered a job at Facebook, which I declined. And <laughs> I moved up to Seattle and got a job at a design agency being a brand strategist. If you've ever wondered who those people are sitting in a room coming up with names for mobile phones, that's a real job and I was doing that. I was helping big companies like Microsoft and T-Mobile and even the New York Knicks on how to build their brands and connect with consumers. And it was really creative. Uh, it was an amazing job and I loved it. But I had what I like to call my quarter life crisis where I felt like, oh my gosh, what am I doing with my life? I'm working on the Microsoft Windows Vista packaging. How is this helping anyone in the world? I wanted to do something more. So I picked up and I moved to rural India. Uh, can anyone point out who does not fit into this picture? <laughs> it's like a really easy game of where's Waldo. 
And I went out to India because I was just never settling. And I thought, well, if this isn't what I want to do, then I'm going to go 180 and do the exact opposite of this, which is living in some rural village in India and hopefully helping some people there living in poverty. And maybe this is what I want to do with my life. Maybe I'll be a nonprofit or something. And while I was there, it was a life-changing experience. And the thing that inspired me the most was this program of a woman who had given a goat to every family in this one village. And I went to visit the village, and it completely transformed. And the goats only cost 20 bucks. So I decided after my volunteer placement, I was going to go home and get all my friends to spend 20 bucks on a goat. But of course, I'd now gone through this branding agency, so I'm not just going to you know, do it a boring way. So I ended up making a viral video, uh, <laughs> a parody of this Andy Samberg song, I'm on a boat. And we did I Want a Goat. And we starred these tribal villagers in, in this um, rural part of India. And we built this website where you could bling out your goat with accessories like Manolo Blahniks and Ugg boots. And the thing totally went viral. And this was before Kickstarter, but we crowdfunded $30,000 worth of goats that we gave to these kids in India. And it was incredible. And at the time, everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, you're going to be the goat lady. And you can do this. And I had to take a long look in the mirror. And I realized, no, this isn't it yet. I can't, this isn't it. I don't want to, I loved it, but I'm done. I'm on to the next thing. And I was still searching for that passion. And it, it came, finally. I was actually hanging out with a group of friends in San Francisco. We started this club called Idea Brunch, where we'd get together and everyone would get up and share their latest idea over breakfast. And in that brunch, my friend Christy, who I studied engineering with at Stanford, got up and complained about the lack of women in the field, said that she fell in love with engineering as a little girl playing with her older brother's hand-me-down Legos and Lincoln Logs and Erector sets. And that's what got her into building. And it just hit me like a lightning bolt. Oh my gosh, why are those boys toys? I didn't get to play with those. We thought those were boys toys. And those toys develop spatial skills. And I thought, well, nowadays, I'm sure things have changed. When I was a kid, you know, it was boys toys. So I went to the toy store the next day and saw the pink aisle. And I felt like I was in the twilight zone. Like it was still the 1950s. And I just stood there and thought, oh my gosh, this is something that I need to fix. There's a huge gap in this marketplace, and it's something that I could do. And I went around to some toy store owners and started telling them, I'm going to make an engineering toy for girls. Isn't that great? What do you think? Give me some advice. And they all looked at me with pity, and they said, construction toys for girls don't sell. Girls want to be princesses. They don't want to be engineers. It's an uphill battle, and you can't fight nature. So I was pretty dejected. But I had the perfect background to do this. I had my engineering degree. I had all of my branding experience and crowdfunding. I don't need these people. I can put it out to the world, because I know that, that people believe in this, that we're not still living in the 1950s anymore. So I got to work. And really, the first step into this journey was attending a social entrepreneurship conference just like this one and getting up and sharing my idea to a room of people who just erupted and wanted to help me. And two of them were design researchers from Cornell, and they said, let's get together. We'll volunteer and help you test these prototypes with kids. And so we went home to home and tested prototypes of this toy idea based on all of this research into gender differences, getting beyond the pink into really appealing to girls. And what we found was girls loved stories and characters. So instead of the typical instruction manual with here's how to build the thing on the front of the box, I started writing stories about Goldie, the girl engineer, who goes on adventures and solves problems by building simple machines so the girls would get to build with Goldie. And after testing on over 100 kids and making tweaks to the prototype along the way, I had girls in tutus building belt drives. And I knew I was onto something. And so I did crowdfunding. And sure enough, people believed in it. And we hit our goal of $150,000 in only four days, went on to double it. And the amazing thing was that people were just writing in, saying that the video had brought them to tears. 
all of these women saying, I was always good at math and science. Why didn't I do this? And I never, people saying I never even knew what engineering was until I just saw your video right now. And so it's this amazing journey to have started this conversation. And sure enough, we landed into Toys R Us. Well, we actually filmed a pretty awesome video, so you'll have to check it out, where we have girls storming through the pink aisle. <laughs> but um, we're, we've turned in less than a year from just this spark of an idea to a company that's growing quickly, and we're making new stories and new characters and more products. And really the best part is to see what the girls are doing with it. And every day we get videos and photos of girls who have built things I could never even imagine. And they're starting to think of themselves as engineers. And the best part is that we're just starting. And uh, we're totally going to disrupt the toy industry. Thank you.